special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Join Paul David and Kyle Benedict as they talk with our community's leaders, newsmakers, and people in the know. You'll hear about the hot topics that affect all our lives in Yavapai County. And now here's today's County Wide. Welcome to County Wide. I'm Paul David. It is great to have you in studio with us today. We've got a brand new guest. She's been around for a couple of years, and shame on us for not having her in yet. Nicole Branton, Red Rock District Ranger. Welcome to studio. Thanks for having me. Now that I've got you here, though, maybe we should do a little background check on you. Where are you from, and how long have you been here? <laughs> sure. So um, I've been here two years now. Okay. And uh, yeah, shame on me for not being here. We'll, we'll fix that. But uh, came from the Arapahoe Roosevelt National Forest and Pawnee National Grassland up in Colorado out of Fort Collins. And I was there for 12 years, but I, uh, I went to graduate school at the U of A, so was really happy for the opportunity to come back to Arizona. I'm an, I'm an archaeologist by training. That's what I did for 15 years for the Forest Service. And uh, um, man, what an opportunity to come back to this kind of landscape that I love and this kind of uh, cultural resources and, and mainly the uh, partners and communities here in the Verde Valley. That's really been the best part of it for me. Working one of the most beautiful places in the world, too. Absolutely. You know, I mean, you got that backdrop all day around you. So what, what drew you here? Just to, just to come back to Arizona? Uh, well, um, I wanted this kind of position. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to uh, have this opportunity to uh, work a little more broadly than archaeology mm -hmm. and uh, really to work with communities and, and uh, work with partners and um, uh, one of my employees who was on the hiring panel for me uh, likes to remind me that I had said that uh, I wanted to be someplace where the Forest Service was really relevant to people and, uh, and helped communities and, and worked closely with communities and partners. And sometimes he says, boy, you really got what you asked for, didn't you? You did, didn't you? I did in, yeah. the, in the best yeah. way possible. Mm -hmm. It really is um, as beautiful as this landscape is and as amazing as the resources are, the best part of it really is all of those partners and communities. And then you reminded me too before the show started that the reason that you hadn't been in here is when you started, the slide fire was pretty much shortly after you started. That's right. And so it was, it was a pretty crazy time for you to hit the ground running and it was. You coming in here probably would have been pretty difficult. It was. Uh, let's, let's get to topic. Um, sure. we, we've actually have three things that I've seen over the last month now coming out mm -hmm. of the Coconino National Forest, and we're going to try to hit all three of those today. We have Fossil Creek. We've got a new plan, proposal, mm -hmm. to kind of deal with the situation down there. Uh, Cathedral Rock Toilet Proposal. I know it sounds odd, but as you <laughs> mentioned before the show, people... People are curious about that one. And then there's mm -hmm. the change of the Red Rock Fee program with Brady Smith uh, sent out yesterday. So we'll try to hit all those. Let's start with Fossil Creek. We've done shows over the years and we've, we've seen some of the pictures down in Fossil Creek. Um, I don't think it was such a, a hot spot at one point in time. Yeah. And then the, the, the decommissioning of the child's power plant started going on. And people, I think, started really getting to, uh, a good views of the, 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 the water down there and how beautiful it is. Mm -hmm. and. Overnight, it became this huge destination. Yeah, it really feels that way. Um, so Fossil Creek is uh, one of our two wild and scenic rivers in Arizona. We get to have both of them here in the Verde Valley in Yavapai County, uh, awesome, the, Ver man. the Verde River and, the, and Fossil Creek. Um, it's 17 miles of beautiful travertine system, uh, crystal clear blue waters. Um, the travertine creates these little pools that make great swimming holes and waterfalls and things like that. Um, and for uh, almost 100 years, um, nobody really knew about it or could go swimming there, except for the people that worked at the hydropower mm -hmm. plant. It was the first hydropower plant in Arizona, there on Fossil Creek in 1909, and um, completely diverted the flows in there. And like you mentioned, uh, the dam was decommissioned in the early 2000s, mm -hmm. and uh, full flows were restored in 2005. And in 2009, Congress designated it a wild and scenic river. And right around that time, people discovered it. Um, so it, overnight, it seemed like it felt. Yeah, I think it felt like that. It was yeah. um, featured in Arizona highways. Now it's really um, been um, uh, highlighted in a lot of social media, lots of videos of it on YouTube and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, and it's beautiful. The problem is uh, that it's being loved to death. That's it's, exactly right. And I've heard that statement several times from different people mm -hmm. that it is being loved to death. Yep. So tell me what that means. Well, um, like you said, the, the use has increased tremendously. In 2006, our monitoring shows that there were about 20,000 people visiting there. In 2013, we had 80,000 people. Is this a year? Yep, a okay, year. Okay, okay. Yep. Um, 
it, people discovered it, but it's actually pretty hard to get to. It's a long road mm -hmm. to, to the um, actual water. You have to access it from two different sides. You can access it here from Camp Verde. Um, it's about a 14 mile drive from Camp Verde on a, on a rough uh, uh, dirt Washboard, road. Washboard, dirt, narrow right. road with sheer cliffs on one side. Right, and that'll <laughs> get you to some of the swimming holes. Or if you wanna to go to Fossil Springs, you access that from Strawberry uh, near Payson. And um, from there, uh, you don't drive very far, but you have about an eight mile round trip hike that is the equivalent of hiking Camelback Mountain. Uh, oh, down Phoenix. Yep. Okay. Huge elevation change, uh, dry, exposed hike. It's great going down, but at the end of the day, you have to hike <laughs> back out of that. Right. And it's hot and it's exposed. There's no place to get water. Um, so uh, it's hard to get to, but people are really bound and determined to get to that beautiful water. So what we've seen is... Um, uh, that there's so many people that want to get there that there's not enough places to park. It's very steep. Um, it's an undeveloped area. We don't have campgrounds. We don't have um, paved parking lots. We don't have permanent restrooms. There is no management there. plan. Is we're, it, right? we're working on the management plan. We're working plan. on the management Right, okay. Yep. So we're working on what we call the Comprehensive River Management Plan. Mm -hmm. um, that will be that long-term plan. Where do we put parking areas? Where can we put restroom facilities, um, all of those sorts of things. Um, and, and most importantly, uh, what we call an adaptive management plan. That's how we'll monitor conditions in there and see, are we losing a lot of vegetation? Do, do we need to manage the numbers that way? Or um, is vegetation recovering really well? And uh, we, can, we can have more people in the area. Um, that plan takes a long time to make. Right. Um, we want to do that with our partners and with communities and, and do that, uh, you know, not in isolation. So that takes time. Mm -hmm. So the current proposal is um, what we call an interim measure. It's a way of managing the area until we're able to build those, those things um, that can, uh, can allow a little more recreation. So the, uh, the proposal that we have now that we're still seeking public comments on, so hopefully people will, will send us comments. Sure, on sure. This. Oh, you'll, you'll probably get them. Yeah, sure. I hope so. Mm -hmm. um, so that proposal is for a reservation system. So essentially we are identifying the um, safe parking spaces in Fossil Creek where um, we can fit vehicles without uh, blocking anybody in, without causing damage to vegetation or wildlife or water quality. Um, in the in the river, and um, then making those available through an online reservation system. So what that means is that um, you can go online, you can make a reservation when you leave your house at seven o'clock in the morning, or maybe you decide to have an extra long breakfast. You don't leave till ten o'clock in the morning. You know that you have a place that you're going to get to swim or hike or bird bird watch. Have we discussed how many people would be allowed down there? How many vehicles a day? Mm -hmm. That's part of the analysis right okay. now. So um, we're looking at literally laying out where people can park. And it's probably between 100 and 150 okay. parking spaces. What time of year would that start and then end? So we're only looking at using that during the busy season. Okay. And that means April 1st to October 1st. Mm -hmm. Th that's the season where we get that tremendous use and where we're seeing the really big traffic jams. Okay, all right, let's take our first break. When we come back, I want to describe some of the issues that are going on mm -hmm. down there. Because we said love to death, and we, we should yep. definitely talk about what's being loved to death down there. Uh, Red Rock District Ranger Nicole Branton in studio today. This is Countywide, I'm Paul David. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. The inherent right to work is one of the elemental privileges of a free people. Endowed, as our nation is, with abundant physical resources, and inspired as it should be to make those resources and opportunities available for the enjoyment of all, we approach re-employment with the real hope of finding a better answer than we have now. Donate to Goodwill, where your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community. Because of Shriners High Schools for Children, I can play basketball. I can climb stairs. I can write my name. At Shriners Hospitals for Children, love is caring for a child, regardless of the family's ability to pay. If you know a child we can help, 
Visit ShrinersHospitalsForChildren.org. Orkin has pest control down to a science. When your business chooses Orkin's Precision Protection Program, you get a tailored pest control program for your specific industry and environment. Your business can benefit from over a century of experience, training, and scientific knowledge that define the Orkin man. Maximum protection, minimum exposure, backed by one of the industry's most comprehensive guarantees. Choose your locally owned and operated Northern Arizona Orkin and get more than an exterminator. Get an expert. talking about Fossil Creek with Nicole Branton, Red Rock District Ranger. Um, we, we need to go back and um, the proposal is out there and you guys are taking public. How long are you taking comments on that? Um, well, we take comments uh, all, the all the time, all the time. And this really is an interim measure. Okay. So um, I can't emphasize enough that the river management plan is something that we, we need uh, all hands on deck for and do, need di need different kinds of input. So we'll we'll be taking that continuously. Do we have a deadline as to when we want to have this plan in place? We'd like it to be in place uh, this spring, if that's the decision. Okay. If right. after looking at all of the analysis, the decision is to implement this reservation system, it would go into place this spring. So we're looking at what four to six months. Yep. Well, six months or so. Okay, so yep. that that's a definite must. And all this is on there on your website. It is. Uh, you guys have got a little news category right there. If you click on there, you can find all the information on there, links and all kinds of stuff on how you can leave comments. Now, we, we talked about it being loved to death, and we've, we've discussed it at length in here uh, several mm -hmm. times that uh, you mentioned loss of vegetation. People are out there chopping down trees. You know, vegetation to some persons a flower where right. vegetation to me is I see trees tumbling over and mm -hmm. you know being chopped into firewood and burnt. Yep. So we've, we've got those things going on. Uh, you said the human waste, animal waste. Yep, yep. So um, we have no permanent restroom facilities in that area. Um, and a lot of it we have porta potties, but a lot of these areas are so steep we can't even put porta potties in there mm -hmm. or have them have them serviced. And when people have to drive 14 miles in, they're spending the whole day at some point, they're going to need to use the restroom. If restrooms aren't there, people still have that need. Mm -hmm. So what we find is a lot of human waste, um, toilet paper, uh, trash, uh, beer cans, soda cans, um, coolers, flip-flops abandoned because uh, it turns out that hike was harder than, pe than people thought it was going to be. Um, we also have a lot of animal waste, and that comes from just picnicking and let's say you finish your banana, you throw your banana peel out on the ground, you figure some, some uh, animal will appreciate having that snack. Well, they will and they'll come back. And those animals, their waste also ends up in the water. And that's where we get really concerned, especially with E. coli mm -hmm. in the water. That's a water quality issue. It's also a concern for people swimming. It's been an issue in Oak Creek. We, that's we're, right. we're, we're, I think we're all familiar with that, that it has been mm -hmm. an issue in Oak Creek over the years. Mm -hmm. okay. It is all over the Southwest. Mm -hmm. It is wherever um, we have uh, creeks like this, where we have um, a, a lot of soil that can easily move into the water. Um, it's, it's a common problem in the Southwest, but where we have these incredible amounts of recreation, it's really exacerbated. Okay, all right. And then the other issue, you mentioned, you, you threw, threw out two numbers before the show, mm -hmm. uh, Gila County Sheriff's Office rescues, Yavapai County Sheriff's Office rescues. This isn't even about loving the place to death, it's about the amount of people that are down there and the hazards that that causes. Right, so the resource issues are, are one thing and they're very important. Um, I think the more urgent issue is that um, this area has a tremendous number of especially heat related injuries but also broken legs broken arms from cliff jumping and things like that um, what i told you before was um yeah that uh, fossil creek is in both gila and yavapai county um, gila county search and rescue and the pine strawberry fire department um, have done 197 search and rescue operations just since, this last year since may okay mm -hmm. since may uh, yavapai wow. county sheriff's office have done 110 since january mm. 
That is a tremendous number of search and rescue operations. With, with that kind of um, concern, you know, with that kind of uh, injuries, we absolutely have to maintain access for emergency vehicles. So uh, the problem that we have with parking in there is that um, people will come in early in the morning or overnight and fill in the parking spaces that don't block the road. And then other people will come in, find those spaces taken, and they've driven a long distance. Um, this is what they're planning on doing with their day. They'll kind of cram themselves in, and eventually they'll block the road. So it's very common to see the road blocked. Mm -hmm. That's why we've had um, the uh, we've done the work that we've been doing over the last couple of years during the busy season. We staff that area. Um, our our recreation folks come in early in the morning. They uh, check how many parking spaces are available. They try to get cars rearranged so that um, an ambulance or a fire truck could get through there. Um, and then once that's full, they stop people and turn them away. So um, uh, what we found is they used to get there at 8 o'clock in the morning, and people had gotten in there earlier overnight. So they started coming at 7 o'clock in the morning. People came even earlier. Uh, by the end of this, this summer, they were coming <laughs> at 6 o'clock in the morning, and they would find that sometimes 300 cars were crammed into there. Oh, and, wow. uh, um, you know, no way to find those people who had parked uh, blocking the road. They were off swimming somewhere. There's no way to chase them down. So that's really what the reservation system is about for us, mm -hmm. is making sure that we can maintain that ingress and egress for emergency response, and also making sure that when you leave home in the morning, you know you're getting a parking space. You're not going to be one of those people that have to be turned away because all of the spaces are taken. And if the reservations aren't available, you can plan someplace else to go. Um, hopefully someplace else on the National Forest, lots of other places to, to recreate, um, but uh, not to try to um, fit into Fossil Creek or just be frustrated by being turned away from Fossil Creek. Right, to drive all the way up and then get down there, anywhere, right. from, anywhere from around here, drive to it and then say, oh, I can't go in now. Right. So this reservation system that we're talking about, this is a proposal. It is. It's not set in stone yet. Nope. But it's another idea to kind of manage in the meantime until the management plan is in place, just yep. a, another kind of a Band-Aid to kind of keep things under control there. Yep. So basically I would go online Mm -hmm. And I would say, okay, I want to go to Fossil Creek on this date and this date. Mm -hmm. Is it one day, two day reservation? It's a one day reservation. One day reservation. So I, I'd get in that reservation. I would print out a copy of my own. Mm -hmm. I would bring it with me when I arrived at the gate. And you guys are going to have a gate. You're going to have sort of a, uh, a little booth set up there? We would have a booth set yeah. up there. Okay. Yep. And uh, the proposal is to manage it as a day use area. Okay. So you would come to the booth. You would show me your, uh, your reservation that mm -hmm. you had printed out. And we would say, have a great day, have fun. Um, the gate is going to close at, I don't know what time yet, but uh, at the end of the day, the gate's going to close, but there's, you'll still be able to leave. Mm -hmm. um, there just won't be able to have people come back in. And, and that's essential for making sure that on the next morning, when uh, your, your friend has made a reservation, that, um, that he has a place to park and that somebody hasn't come in overnight and taken his parking space. Gotcha. Okay, so all this is being taken into consideration. All right, let's take our second break. Nicole Branton, Red Rock District Ranger in studio today with the Coconino National Forest. This is Countywide. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise and be the hero that I've always wanted to be. Why is Connor having trouble focusing in school? Having trouble finding Connor's middle school? Would you like directions? No, why is Connor having trouble focusing in school? Finding lowest airfare to Istanbul. No, I'm, I'm tired of fighting with him over homework. Home walk restaurant, need a review? No, I need help. He's very smart, but his mind it wanders. He's disorganized. I think I understand. Oh, God. French fries, finding best potatoes. No! Russet, fingerling. You can't go. <sighs> Why don't you understand me? Sorry, I was trying to show how Connor feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. 
For the one in five kids with learning and attention issues, this is what life can feel like. ExploreUnderstood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues designed to help your child thrive in school and in life. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. Welcome back to County Y. We've got just a few minutes left in the program. Uh, real quick, you wanted to mention um, yeah, there's going to be a fee when you make the reservation. Right, right. Okay. So for to make that online reservation, there will be a fee that uh, just pays for the administration of that reservation system. Um, none of those fees are retained by the National Forest. Um, it's it's just to, pr to pay for that service. Okay. Um, and that'll be per reservation. So in your example where you talked about maybe you want to spend the weekend, reserve it for a couple days, you'll make two reservations. Okay. Okay. Now there's a, the Cathedral Rock Toilet. We've got the same problem there where it's mm -hmm. kind of being loved to death at the entryway there. We've got human mm -hmm. waste, toilet paper, diapers, things like that because there's no restroom facility. And you said something like 80,000 people visit that place a year. 80,000, so, yep. You know, obviously it's needed. Right. So, yeah, switching over to Sedona and uh, those, again, really high demand uh, locations. Uh, we are proposing putting in a toilet at the Cathedral Trailhead. Um, long overdue, I don't think anybody would uh, would argue that it's needed there. It's one of our most popular um, areas, 80,000 visitors a year is what our monitoring shows us. Um, it's one of those iconic red rocks that everybody wants to go to. Right. Um, so we'll be, uh, we're proposing putting in a toilet there just to provide additional facilities for people before they take off into the forest um, for their comfort and for resource protection. Again, really concerned about water quality and just the experience, the recreation experience for people there, not to encounter human waste. You're supposed to be going to a beautiful place. You're not supposed to be seeing that stuff right. on the side of a trail. So that's a great idea. Okay. And then there's a change to the Red Rock Fee program. This uh, Brady Smith yep. sent this to me yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, What's, what's that all about? We've got about a minute left. Okay. Um, yep, we're proposing simply to move from what people may know as these areas in Oak Creek Canyon and 179 where um, you've had a whole area where you needed a Red Rock Pass. We're just shrinking that down to the specific sites. So all of those very popular sites, there's 18 of them, um, would still be places where the Red Rock Pass would be required and where 90% of that revenue is retained to maintain those facilities. Um, and then we're proposing adding two new sites to that. Uh, the Fay Canyon Vista and Trailhead and the Dry, Dry Fork Canyon and Vista Trailhead. So those are places where people will have toilet facilities, interpretive signs, picnic tables, like you said, to sit and watch the sunset, mm -hmm. um, all of those things. And I, we focus that on our really high use areas. Okay, so I guess we got a little bit of time left. We've got about 30 seconds left. So instead of it being through Oak Creek Canyon, parking on the side mm -hmm. of the road, that would go away. Right. Uh, well, Highway 179 would go away. Mm -hmm. Those are the only two areas, the areas, areas left. Right. Those are the areas. So uh, right. when we're talking about an area, I mean, pulling on the side of the road and parking, you should have mm -hmm. a fee. Okay. Right. Those are gone. And now we're individual locations, maybe uh, petroglyph sites and right. just specific locations where there are services available. Exactly. To so them. we're just trying to be clearer to people so they can plan their trip better and decide whether or not they want to purchase a Red Rock Pass mm -hmm. um, so that they know those specific areas, uh, specific sites are where you need it, not the spaces in between. We're not proposing any change to the fee. The fee would remain the same. And uh, just just uh, being more clear about where it's required. Thanks for coming in, All right, Nicole. thanks for having me. Very good to see you. We'll have to have you back next spring. We'll get you back here. And once we get this management plan for Fossil Creek area fixed up yes. and organized and ready to go, we'll have you back for that. Okay, Red Rock District Ranger Nicole Branton in studio today. I'm Paul David. That's today's County Wide, and we'll talk to you again next time.